Hey, this is Malcolm341. In this video, we're going to look at a couple different ways to gridify UVs and also check out a script I created to automate the process. Gridifying UVs is a must for any good UV pack, so let's get into it. So first, why is it good to gridify your UVs? The main benefit of doing this is square and rectangular UV shells fit together better than circular or curved shaped UV shells. So you get a tighter, more efficient UV pack, and this means your final texture is higher resolution, which is especially important in the games industry. There's also other benefits, like painting a straight line in UV space will actually follow the curve of the geometry on the texture, which can make adding certain details to the texture a lot easier. Okay, so let's look at the different techniques we can use to do this. One way to do this would uh, be uh, selecting the object here. It's got this kind of um, crazy shape, whatever. Um, go into UV. I'm just going to go into the planar options box here. And uh, I'll just reset this stuff here. And I always like to do keep height width. Uh, and then I'm just going to do a camera projection just so we can get some UVs on the object. So you can see these are awful. Uh, I don't want those. So next, we are going to uh, pick a border edge. I'll just choose this one, double click that guy to get the edge. And then I'm going to go into the UV editor and shift right click, hold, and say cut to give another border edge there. Then I'm going to right click and select all the UVs. I'm going to go uh, shift right click and then go to unfold and then just unfold everything. And I'm going to get this, which is pretty good, but it's all slanty and uh, it's not gridified. So then I'm going to select the middle border edge here by double clicking. Uh, sorry, not the middle border edge, just the middle edge. And then I'm going to shift right click again, and I'm going to say uh, straighten UV shell. And boom. And that's going to give us a perfectly straight line here, but we still have to deal with all of this waviness there. So I'm going to right click, go to UV, select everything, shift right click one more time, and then go into straighten, and then go straighten UVs with uh, default options. And boom, there we go. Fully nice and gridified. Uh, everything is looking great. This will pack uh, perfect with uh, other shaped shells. The only thing that you're going to maybe need to watch out for is you'll see a little bit of skewing here and a little bit of skewing there. But um, from my experience, this little bit of skewing uh, is much more preferable than having to have like an edge seam there or cutting the edges here and having a bunch of circle shaped shells there because that's just going to eat up all of your UV space. It's not going to be uh, that useful. You're going to lose a lot of resolution. So that's one way you can do it pretty quick. I should also mention if you're super concerned about this skewing, um, I wouldn't be, but if you're super concerned about this and you don't mind spending like uh, a couple extra uh, verts, what you can do is just come into the, whoops, go into object mode, just come into the multi-cut tool and then just uh, hold uh, control and then middle mouse click uh, to, to add an edge loop right to the center there. And you see, as I add more subdivisions here, that will actually like reduce the skewing. So you can see here, that'll actually make it more accurate. Keep adding subdivisions. It'll just keep getting better and better. So you can see the skewing is disappearing more and more here. Let's do a close up. So you can see every time I add an edge loop, you're kind of giving it another UV to latch onto to make the line straighter. Um, I would obviously not add this much subdivision. This is crazy. This is just for demonstration purposes, but adding an additional edge loop here or there might not be the end of the world for your particular shape that you're UVing and might be able to reduce some skewing that would otherwise kind of mess up your texturing process. Okay, so I've just deleted a couple of the faces back here, which I'll explain in a second. But the next way that you can gridify UVs uh, is an older trick uh, that I'll show you how to do now. Um, I've just made a button here that just brings up the planar map options box like we did through here. So if you see me going over here for the rest of the video, it's the same as uh, going into here and clicking that button there just to save time. So uh, planar map, option box, camera, blah, 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 same as before. So we've got our um, UVs that are not great or whatever. Uh, so before they had that straighten UV shell stuff, there was a way to do this in Maya that is actually still useful in some situations. So what you would do is you would select all the faces on the model, and then you'll hold down the right click button and go to modify, I believe it is. Yep. And then unitize and select that. And what that does is it maps every single quad into the zero to one UV space. So they're all stacked on top of each other right now. Then you'd switch over to edge mode by hold right click again, drag select all of the edges, and then shift right click. And then you want to do a move and sew. 
and boom, there you go. So now we've gridified all the UVs, but the only downside to this is the UVs are all gridified and unitized to one UV shell. So you'll see like there's actually stretching because depending on how the UV layout, or sorry, depending on the 3D design of your model is gonna like kind of stretch and uh, map to different faces. So um, you'll actually have to do a little bit of work here after the fact. So once you've got this, we just need to find out where the long way of the model is. So it looks like it's mapped you know, top to bottom. This is the top row of verts here. Yep, great. So now what we can do is we know we've got one axis uh, UV map correctly. So we'll select all of these verts here. And then what we want to do, sorry, UVs. And then what we want to do is we want to shift right click, go to unfold, and then we want to unfold vertically because we know horizontally is fine, but vertically is wrong. So we'll go unfold long B and boom, there you go. So now we've got nice even squares on everything and everything is gridified. And now we can just scale it to whatever resolution uh, that we need. So that's another a uh, cool trick that you can use to do it. Now, the reason that you would want to do this sometimes and not the other way is you might have like a really curvy shape in the straighten UV shell thing by selecting, double clicking the middle edge and using that newer command. Sometimes that won't work. So if you run into trouble with that, you can always fall back to this technique, uh, which is still useful for certain shapes. Now that's kind of annoying having to do all the steps in there, like unitizing, selecting the face, changing all the stuff, going around doing all that crap. Um, so I actually created a little script to do this that I've been using for a long time. Uh, and now I use it in conjunction with the other method, but uh, basically to automate that, all that uh, junk that we just looked at right there. So uh, let me just go to UVs and I'll just delete these guys. And same thing, we're just going to put a camera options box planar map through it just to get some UVs back. Whoops, where do they go? Here we go. So great, we've got that uh, stuff going on there. And so I'm just going to select all the faces. And uh, I'm just going to run this little thing that says grid UV here. I'm just going to click it. And magically, we get exactly that uh, same thing. So I, I find that I have to do this quite a bit on a bunch of different models. It's really handy to just have a button to auto do it. And then from there, go to unfold. We know it's going to be vertical for this model. And there you go. You're done. So only takes like two clicks to uh, do it in this um, alternate method or whatever. Um, the only reason that I couldn't um, have the script actually do the unfold part for you is that when you run the script and gridify everything, sometimes it, you want to unfold vertically and sometimes you want to unfold horizontally. And so uh, if I automate that part, um, sometimes you get the wrong result. So basically what you want to do is just select the faces of whatever model you're doing and just uh, click the magic button and then either unfold vertically or unfold um, horizontally. So there you go. So now let's talk about why I had to delete the back of the model there to demonstrate it, now that you've seen like how the script works and how to manually do it, uh, if you want to just do it by hand or whatever. Um, so the issue is that Unitize, uh, first of all, it needs quads. So if you have some tries in there, it'll work, but it's not going to be fantastic. Um, give it a try. You'll see what I mean. It, it'll, it'll start kind of like rotating some of the stuff. It won't come as a perfect grid. Um, so first, uh, the script does need quads, um, as does the manual method that you do by hand. Uh, but secondly, it needs a border edge uh, to automate the script. And so basically, to demonstrate it, I just deleted the back here, but now I'll show you. I just show the outliner here and unhide the original. Now I'm going to show you uh, how it works. Hide that again. I'm going to show you how it works with uh, like a fully um, seamless model that doesn't have a border edge. So whatever, we've got some UVs on here already. So I'm just going to select the faces in 3D and I'm going to click the magic button and it's going to work. But you're going to see it's all janky. What happened here? Why is there overlapping words? Why is it all sewed together? And the reason it's all sewed together is because when it sews it all together, it it is completely seamless. And so it just sews it all together on top of itself. So how do you get around this? Um, deleting the back faces isn't really an option. Like, why would you want to do that to your model? Obviously, don't. So here's kind of the trick, basically, that I would do. So select all of the faces and then just deselect uh, one row there. And then click the button to gridify those and just move those out of the way. And then select the remaining faces and gridify those. 
and then just find out, oops, sorry, go into edge mode and then just find out which edges uh, that little strip is required and then just shift uh, right click and just say move and sew edges and you're back in business. So even if you have a completely seamless model, it's still way faster to just uh, use the button there and just kind of do it in segments or whatever. And then of course the script will work on whatever your selection is. Uh, so you can do a bunch of different tricks with it really. Start out with your UVs here and you just wanted to get from here to here, let's say. You don't even want to do the whole model or whatever. It works on selection, so you can just click the grid button and you'll get that just that strip as a grid right there. Or maybe you wanted to say, oh, I want like from here to here, plus this, plus this, plus this to all just be gridified and then I'll do some other functions on it or whatever. So just click the button and there you go. So whatever selection of faces, it will grab those and just gridify them, which is pretty handy. Cool, so now you know how to gridify your UVs easily. Grab the script if you want to save some time. If you've already purchased the script pack, I've added the gridify button to it. So uh, all you need to do is download it again to get the free update. If you like this video and want to see more game art tips and tricks, please click the subscribe button. As usual, any links will be in the description. If you've got any questions, post them in the comments area. Thanks for watching, everybody. Have a stellar day.